Hello again, everybody. This is Brian from Breaking Down Security. We have part two of our interview with Anna. Uh, those of you who listened last week heard her uh, and us discussing uh, an issue that she had at a call center where somebody's calling up, uh, doing an actual social engineering attack on her call center uh, representatives. They are, you know, before she was giving out training, they were, you know, offering up information about purchase order information. They were able to get, you know, uh, this person calls back on a semi-regular basis and tries to glean information from her call center reps. And uh, she has supplied us with audio on what is going on. So this week, we are going to talk about what happened um, during and after these uh, events. So we talked last week before, like what they were doing before. Uh, we got to hear some audio about what was going on um, before all the controls were put in place, before all the training. So now we're going to hear about what happened uh, as training is happening. So there, she's having to you know, stand up uh, the training and, and give proper training on how to avoid giving out unnecessary information or information that could lead to purchase order compromise, and then the after effects of that. So there's a couple of uh, things to, to show how effective the training has been. Um, you know, you're going to turn in, you're going to find out if the first round of training actually worked or if there's, you know, they needed both rounds of training or additional rounds of training and what happened to some of the people who were uh, working at the org. So um, you'll hear all the contact information uh, for Anna and those next week. And, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get right into it right now. We're talking about, uh, we're going to start talking about, uh, clip number three, uh, which is the one that is happening as Anna is giving training to some of the call center reps. So, uh, you've done the training, everybody's, you know, been trained up. They're now on the guard for, you know, the, the bad calls and, um, Uh, I think it's probably a good time to go ahead and start with number three. We'll go ahead and do number three. It's a lot shorter. It's only 30 seconds. Uh, Is there anything you'd like to preface uh, this before we, I play it? Sure. So in this case, um, it was actually the same day of the, of the training. So it's fresh. However, um, the initial training is also, uh, you know, hadn't been dialed in yet. We were kind of winging this because we didn't have a, a script to go on either. Uh, so, uh, in this case, uh, I, you know, I, I think the, uh, the person handling the call did an okay job, but they were a little short. They, they, they came up a, a little short. We reviewed this and immediately went back and re, uh, re-upped the training again and put that person back through training. Roger that. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and play this one now. Thank you for this is Andy for you today. I need to check on my order. Okay, do you have the order number? Three. You said four zero zero six five eight three. Five eight two, I'm sorry. It's quick. And you're checking on it? Yeah, I wanted to know the total because my wife said something. Oh, um the total is two hundred and one dollars and fifty seven cents. All right, can I keep my work phone number unless you already have it? Um well can you just verify the billing address for the order? Thank you for calling. This is speaking. How may I? Sorry, my bad. Again, uh, yeah. So uh, he that one seemed to do a lot better. The guy hung up when he was asked to verify the uh, account address, right? Yes. Yeah, so as soon as uh, as soon as the billing as soon as he was asked to identify the billing address, he hung up. The uh, where where I think mistakes might have been made here is that the customer clearly gave the wrong order number. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you could have misheard the order number. So I would have immediately been suspicious uh, that, you know, two versus three, uh, the, the, it doesn't get misheard. The customer didn't, uh, it, you know, didn't misread it, what have you. It was pretty obvious. Uh, he did give up the um, dollar value of the order uh, before verifying anything. So, as soon as he had heard the, the two versus three, what have you, uh, he should have really gone into a challenge response thing like he did there at the end where he said, okay, if you want any more information, you're going to have to give me information first. Yep. Now, was that actual real time? It was like, it only took 30 seconds. And the minute he asked that he hung up or, or did he try to, yes. to you know, okay. Nope. 
Uh, he's going to call back again to try to extract uh, from someone else. So as soon as he gets any pushback, he's going to hang up and hope he gets somebody who hasn't been trained. Uh, right. And I think this is uh, this really underscores the importance of train everyone all at once. Uh, I, I know it's hard, but you know you have exposure for everyone who doesn't have current training. Right. Right. So, um, so did, did the person who we heard the, the gentleman in, in number three, did he, um, did you fall, you followed up with all of this uh, with the additional training or was this between like the first and the second time you said a majority of these folks got one or two sessions worth of training. Was that after the first session only, or did, was this person graduated from, from your, uh, your training at that point? So it was it was one session only. It was uh, I was literally in training with another group of call center people when this happened. Ah, okay. um, and he he actually uh, recognized as soon as the the the, the gentleman hung up, uh, our our call center rep went, "Hey, wait a minute!" and uh, and immediately came into the conference room and grabbed his manager who went out listened to the call, came back and grabbed me. And, you know, it was like, oh, hey, wait, we need to, uh, you know, we, we need to go through this again with, uh, with a little bit more, uh, you know, direction as to it's okay to, uh, to challenge the customer. No, that's awesome. So um, when should that challenge happen? Were you training that it needed to happen right away? Initially, we weren't training that it needed to happen right away. Um, what, uh, and, and, you know, it's quite possible that I wasn't clear enough that uh, and, and I modified my takeaway point that I, that I drive home, which is you should never give the customer any information that they should already have. Yeah. So if they say, what's the phone number on my account? The customer should already know what the phone number on their account is. You don't need to give it to them. Um, what address did I have that shipped to? Well, what address <laughs> do you think you had it shipped to? Right. Um, so I, I wasn't clear enough that we're not giving out any information that the customer should already have. Um, what was my order total? Uh, well, what, uh, what do you show for an order total? Uh, what's, uh, what's on your receipt? Mm. Uh, well, I don't have my receipt. Okay, can you uh, just verify your address for me? If you think about when you call, and, and I like to use the, um, your bank as an example, when you call your bank, they instantly challenge you half to death before they'll even acknowledge that you are a living, breathing entity, right. you have to answer everything about yourself. Right. Um, oh, can you give me the last four digits of your social security number? Oh, what's your account number? Uh, oh, what's the last three, uh, when you call your credit card company, what's the last three transactions you made on your credit card? Right. Um, yep. they're, you know, so they're constantly collecting information. And, and I have to say that uh, to a large extent, uh, I actually went back and called several of my credit card companies and my banks and uh, wrote down what their challenge response system is mm. uh, so that I could, you know, try to use that to help base our training program on something that obviously they, they hold a lot more money than us and they probably have spent a lot more money, time and resources in investigating how this works. So they're probably going to have a program that's that's pretty well designed to protect against it. Right, right. Yeah, my um uh, my bank that I use actually has a code word in addition to the the telephone pin which you you type in which can be anywhere between 8 to 12 characters or whatever that you know the so the the call center system, you know, the, uh, I forget what the name of it called, but you know, it's like, Oh, hi. And I'm like, hi, I'm Brian. Uh, and they're like, what's your code word? And I'm like, it's, you know, blah. Um, it's not actually blah, but it's something else. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Uh, I, I would assume in, in some cases, I guess it depends on the, the type of call center you're going to have to. Um, so you've added some of these protections in place in your current call center. Uh, not all of them, obviously, but, but some of the ones that make more sense for, for, you know, a retail company? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's impacted the, uh, the training. Uh, mm -hmm. We're also um, uh, using some AI to go back in time and analyze, um, or machine learning if you prefer, to go back in time and analyze uh, some of these calls. Uh, and we have found several more examples of people uh, different than this gentleman doing 
things that look awfully suspicious. Uh, we can't say for sure that they are, but they look awfully suspicious to me. Yeah. Um, do you have any kind of warning system? So like, let's say uh, you've got Bill, the call center rep there, and he thinks the call is fishy. Is he ordered to terminate the call at that time? Or does he, you know, you know, type something on his keyboard to an internal chat and says, Hey, I've got a, a live one here. To, I mean, what, what do you guys, uh, I don't know how much you want to give away or if you, you know, this is you know, any kind of secrets, but is there anything that you guys are doing to, you know, warn potentially uh, other folks of these things? Right. So what we actually have now is, is we do have an internal chat system. Mm -hmm. And if somebody uh, becomes suspicious, they should challenge the customer. Uh, if they're not sure, uh, they should escalate the call to the call center manager. Mm -hmm. uh, so they will, they, they will over chat, uh, over si uh, out of band, side band. They will say to the, uh, to the call center manager, hey, you know, I, I really want to send this one to you. Uh, you know, see what you think of this. And then they'll go back to the customer and they'll use an excuse like, um, I'm sorry, you know, my, uh, my terminal uh, just crashed. Um, I'm going to send you to our, uh, to our call center manager who can better help you with this call. Oh, no. um, and, you know, while I go reboot my terminal, sorry about that. Right. Social, um, and social engineer. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, we're, we're social engineering the social engineers, I guess. Nice. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, after, so everybody's done the training at least twice. Um, I think we probably can go ahead and do number five. Um, what did, what did the call center reps think of the training? Did they think it was unnecessary? Did they think that, well, I, you know, I can always tell when, when somebody's, do, I mean, what, what did the, what did the mentality of the, of the, of the call center reps, uh, what, 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 what was their feelings about the, the training period? It's interesting. They uh, actually, uh, nobody felt that it was unnecessary or that they would know. I think the, the, uh, a, a common theme was actually hurt feelings. Oh. Uh, they, were, they were hurt that they were investing in this customer and the customer was, was actually abusing them. Uh, so, you know, I think a lot of it was, uh, was really hurt feelings. Um, in some cases, or at, the, at least in one very specific case, uh, we had a call center uh, rep uh, who had been with the company for a very long time, and uh, she was the friendliest, sweetest, most helpful person in the entire world, and unfortunately, she wasn't able to break out of the mold of the friendliest, sweetest, nicest, most helpful person in the world, and we had to remove her from the phones because the, the the risk was just too high uh, with her that uh, she uh, she was not she, she was actually social engineered by the same guy how she didn't recognize his voice I'll never know but she was social engineered by this guy at least three times since the training mm. uh, so it was just uh, and and listening to her other calls it wasn't just him because um, sometimes this is all innocent too right. and you know that that is of course the risk but. If um, uh, and I know this isn't really your question, but uh, also, um, how does the customer respond uh, to this as well? Right. Uh, and in the, the the case of the customers, we've gotten you know a little bit uh, because we tend to be a more uh, a traditional older industry. Um, the uh, you know several of the customers are like, you know, why uh, why do you need to know this, or why are you asking me this, or you know, what the heck is going on here? Right. And as soon as the as soon as the the call center rep who's been trained, uh, you know how to respond to that. As soon as the call center rep says, uh, you know, we're doing this for your protection. Uh, we're we're doing this because we care about your privacy. We care about your security. Um, and um, uh, honestly, I have not heard a single customer continue to push back. Uh, and I think again because other industries that protect uh, things like money uh, have already adopted this many years ago. Um, everybody's used to it. Everybody's, you know, yeah, it may be frustrated. Yeah, it may drag the call out. Uh, but it's, it is a reality in our world today. Right. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, play uh, both number four and number five sequentially. I'll just uh, add a little break there to say number five, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that and, and, and finish up hopefully after this. So here's, uh, here's audio number four. 
Thank you for calling Business for Speaking. How may I help you? Check my order. Okay. Do you have your order number? 400-116-857. Okay. One moment while I pull that up. Hmm. You said the order number was 400-116-857? Uh, 400 Four zero zero one one six five eight oh. six. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. One one six. Uh, it was five eight six for the last ones. Yeah. Okay. Correct. All right. One moment. Okay. Uh, so I see. It looks like this was for uh, some ends. A timber. To, yeah. How much is my total? Uh, two sixty two fifty nine. Correct. Yeah. All right. Let me give you my work number, and that was it. If you already have that, I don't know if my wife gave it to you. Uh, let me see here. In order to do that, I would need you to confirm the address we have on file. Okay. Thank you for calling. This is what may I do for you today? Hello? I'm sorry. Um, my order? Oh, okay. Let's see. Do you have an order number? 800 Eight five seven. So you said four zero zero one one six. Hmm? Oh, four zero zero one one six five eight seven. My bad. Five eight seven. Yeah. And let's see. So I have that order here. Um, what were you checking on there? Two sixty two fifty nine. Um. Can you just verify the information on here? Okay, that was the the last one. So you know, it's it's, it's interesting. You you say the call center folks don't have a, a a script, but the the guy who keeps calling the call center definitely has a script because the first thing he's like, oh, I'd like to check on my order, and you know, he it's like he he builds he builds his own script for this. Very much, I think that's probably true. Um, I, I actually wonder if, uh, and you know, this is this this might be me uh, inventing, uh, it, you know, in, inventing the story behind it to uh, to help understand it. But you know, you almost wonder if there's not a a, a group or syndicate uh, who sits down and and comes up with with how to do this because um, everything we've seen has been really consistent. It does seem to be scripted. And it seems to be really effective unless you're inoculated against it. Right. Yeah. He's not, uh, you know, there's no niceties. It's not, he's not changing up his delivery. It's like, you know, hi, can I, you know, Oh, can I have my order? Um, okay. Well, and then, you know, goes through, he's not like, Hey, it's a nice day. How you doing? Where you live? You know, nothing like that. No small talk. He's just right. You know, boom, boom, boom. Um, so it, so is this guy still hitting you or, um, are you, you know, do you have, you know, something that is stopping him by, you know, I know you said there's some machine language or AI or whatever that's detecting him. Can you detect him fast enough so that he never actually makes it to your call center? No, unfortunately we can't do that today. Hmm. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we don't have the, uh, the, the wherewithal really uh, to, to do that. And our phone system, you know, it's, um, I think like a lot of retailers um, and, you know, maybe I'm mistaken, but uh, a lot of retailers I've seen, mid-sized retailers, we suffer from a lot of technology debt. Uh, our phone system is probably 18, 19 years old at this point. Um, it's, it's slated for replacement, but darn it, it works. And there, there's a whole ACD thing behind uh, the, the, the call center from uh, you know, uh, being able to detect how long the queue is, predict how many people you need to have, you know, staffing so that you can let a certain number of people go to lunch while you have a certain number of people on the phones. Uh, so there's a, uh, a velocity of calls. Uh, you know, you're having a good day, you're having a bad day. Um, there's, uh, so these systems are actually very complex. Okay. All right. Uh, I think I lost your question in there somewhere. I'm sorry. No, that's, that's, that's fine. Uh, yeah, obviously they're, you know, with, with companies, it's, it's hard to upgrade too, because you kind of have to do it all at once. There's no like, you know, well, you're going to use this one today and, you know, there's everything has to fail over kind of at the same time. So, 
uh, you could actually suffer operational loss or, or costs and, you know, operational loss by, you know, having your, you know, your data center, or your call center being down. So um, I completely understand. So um, Mr. Betcher, do you have any questions? Why does he mess up the order number in the beginning? Is he just trying to get the call center rep to fill it, in, fill in a valid number for him? I believe that's uh I, I believe that's what he's doing, and my suspicion, and again, this is just my suspicion, uh, is that he's using something of an old carny trick, um, where I'm going to guess your weight uh, by saying a number and watching your body language. And in this case, he's, you know, saying a number, and if the call center person doesn't really understand the number, then it's probably not a valid number. And so, oh, I'm sorry, what I meant is this other thing. And so I suspect he's using an old carny trick of watching the, the body language of the person. And in this case, the virtual body language, um, the, the, the voice inflection, the length of time it takes to pull up the order number, uh, the pause that the person's giving to establish whether or not he's on the right number. So he gets two, three, even four bites at the apple before somebody goes, you really don't know what my weight is within a hundred pounds, do you? Right. Right. Yeah. I, um, yeah, that, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've had that happen, but unfortunately, uh, they couldn't figure it out cause I looked, I looked, I looked lighter than I was. So thankfully I won that prize, but, um, wow. So, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is, is I know people who, uh, I know people, uh, I'm, you know, kind of big deal in the industry. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we have, you know, people on our, on our, you're slack. a thought leader. Oh, oh, oh no. Anne's got to go now. Cause you know, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but we have a, we have a channel with uh, social engineering and OSINT that we, you know, we have, uh, folks like Joe Gray, who's done CTFs, uh, and, and other folks who, uh, are trying to gather information and understand how to do these things correctly. Um, uh, Joe, has done the SECTFs at DEF CON and Derby CON and such. And, you know, it, I, I wondered how he goes about preparing for things like this. And, um, you know, I, I thought it would be interesting for us to talk about it from the other point of view, because he's got to go in, he's got to find information about the company. Uh, he may not be calling customer reps or call center reps. He may be calling somebody else completely, but, uh, he has to create a script or something that, you know, he can at least intelligently talk to any answers or any questions that might come up from the, from the people or, or try to get the information that he's got. He's got a specific goal like this gentleman did, uh, started out by asking the questions about the order number, you know, what's my email address. So this person could have been somebody you would have heard at an SECTF in this case, you know, trying to get information about, about various things. Um, it, it's all about, you know, goals in this case. And, um, I had a point, but you know, it, it's just interesting to see this from the other side, you know, uh, people at call centers who, like you said, get, got upset that they were being taken advantage of in this case. And it's definitely a trust issue. That is, is one that I, I've not, uh, you know, thought about before. So I found that quite interesting. And I would love to hear what the professional, um, uh, OSINT folks uh, uh, or social engineering folks, the SE folks, uh, you know, who do this for a living, I would love to hear what they have to say about this kind of um, uh, what I'll call more subtle social engineering uh, and, you know, how to make the, the process of um, uh, inoculating against it uh, better because, you know, they're, they're professionals at attacking mm -hmm. and in order to defend against this, I have to put myself in the mindset of the attacker uh, so, you know, in, interacting with, uh, with professional attackers who are not out to hurt me uh, would, uh, is, is actually also, I think, very valuable, too. So that is, that is a, a value of having a community. Right. <clears throat> so uh, we, we talked a little bit at the beginning about <laughs> metrics that are tailored, you know, the metrics are tailored to support an environment. You, you answer so many calls. How did, how did your metrics change because of, of this training? Did uh, you, you know, lower the number of calls per hour to make sure that, you know, you're not having the call center people hurry through a call or, you know, well, if I don't make my, you know, I don't make my number of calls this hour, 
you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to get paid as much or what. I don't know how it works with regards to pay there, but did you, did you make any changes to the metrics you were using to measure like, Oh yeah, this person, you know, found Bob again this week, you know, who tried to call and get the order number. Do you have like rewards for those kinds of things now? Well, I will say that the, the two last people that you heard, um, I did, uh, uh, because it was right after training that this happened, uh, I did pull um, uh, their group back in uh, to the uh, to the conference room. I did play these calls for them uh, and did give um, a uh, I think a fairly nice um, uh, gift card to uh, to both of those people for uh, uh, you know for catching that and uh, and thank you very much for doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, we had some, some positive recognition there. I don't believe our metrics have actually changed uh, in this. I don't think, you know, yes, we're asking them to slow down a little bit, but I think we're relatively, um, I don't want to say generous, but relatively generous on those, uh, on those metrics because, you know, some calls just take longer. Mm -hmm. And in this case, uh, you know, those calls take longer because they're they're bad guys and not because they have a, a really technical kind of question that has to be researched. So I think for us, it didn't really change our metrics uh, basically at all. Okay. Uh, was there uh, any changes to, you know, interface or access to information? Did, what, did you guys find that maybe the call center reps have too much access to order information and, you know, you know, remove some of that or did, you know, did anything change in that regard? So one of the things I did do, um, and we're, we're still playing with this. Um, there are now trap records, uh, in the database. If you enter a, uh, order number, uh, that is a trap record, uh, especially if you're trying to extract a large number of, of, uh, order records or the velocity, of the extraction is too high, mm -hmm. uh, so you're jumping around in the database. Uh, mm -hmm. It will actually flag uh, the uh, the call and require you to transfer it to a manager. Okay, uh, is that to reduce the chances of call center reps accessing accounts themselves, or or, or what? It's kind of to help. It's kind of to help them. Um, you know, if if this guy comes in and says, "I want order." one, two, three, I mean, three, two, one, I mean, one, three, two, uh, the, the velocity there is, is high. Right. Uh, and why are you, you know, why are you pulling all those records on a single call? Uh, you probably don't need to be pulling all those records on a single call. So that's something that needs to be reviewed real time uh, by, a, by a second person, at least preferably management. Right. Okay. Very cool. All right. Um, uh, Mr. Better, transfer, that, that second person is much more suspicious of the call because it was transferred there for a reason, right? It was yeah. transferred there for a reason. Uh, they also have a, a significantly larger amount of experience and they're also the primary training agent, uh, who is, uh, adopting this, this training into, um, in, into the process now, so not only have they been through the training, going through the training once a quarter, but they're giving the training every few days. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's constantly at the very top of their mind. Uh, and also they're a, um, uh, they're, they're a long-term employee who, um, you know, is not going to take that institutional knowledge with them and leave. Uh, so it, it continues to be uh, communicated. It continues to become more and more a part of the culture. Uh, where that person just treats it as uh, it's the same thing as always physically smiling when you're on the call so that it, uh, that the, the sound of that smile comes through the call. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's that same kind of, uh, of institutional knowledge, that same kind of cultural knowledge. And from the attacker's point of view, they basically have to start over because they built a rapport with the first one. They might be, getting something that they've invested capital into that call initially. And now it's, it's a, it's a huge loss to be transferred. Right. It is a huge loss to be transferred. And frankly, everything we've heard, they hang up uh, <laughs> because they, they know that you're, or they suspect that you're onto them and there's no money in staying on that call if you're onto them. 
right? So if you move from 50 call center people to one of the three people who might have heard you call 10 minutes ago and got escalated to, um, you'd be like, well, hey, Bob, you just called five minutes ago about a different order number. Uh, you know, maybe you should hang up because you're not going to get any more information. You know, that kind of stuff. And, and yeah, and one of the things I actually, because people's feelings do get hurt, uh, because mm -hmm. call center reps' feelings do get hurt, right. uh, we have to remind them that this isn't personal, uh, that they can't, um, you know, so, uh, so like me, they can become old and jaded and suspicious of everyone. Uh, you know, is, is that pregnant woman who's trying to get in the door really a pregnant woman who's trying to get in the door? Right. Um, and, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm going to need to see your ultrasound, ma'am. Um, right. It's, um, uh, you know, so it, you can become, uh, uh, you know, a little too reactive to this. Uh, so we also have to try to kind of temper uh, that reaction as well. Uh, because, uh, uh, you know, because people do take it, uh, so, uh, so personally. Yep. Yeah. I never, I tell my wife that I never assume a woman is pregnant until I see crowning. So, cause I never want to make that mistake. So, um, so y I, I want to go back cause you had mentioned, uh, when you were doing the training, you brought your loss prevention folks in. Now, uh, I, I have always assumed loss prevention people were in the stores kind of watching for shoplifters, how are they working with your call centers? Um, uh, are, are, were they deputized to start doing the training now because they were, you know, th that's considered a, a, a loss of information or were they working with compliance to make sure that there was no um, a loss of, of personal information? What, what are we looking at with the, the loss prevention folks? They report to me. They'll do whatever I tell them to do. I'm sorry. Ah, um, the, uh, <laughs> you're in the um, this week, Jill. Get out there. <laughs> the uh, uh, the um, you know they're 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 my pitch hitters. Um, the uh, the the LP people are not just uh, uh, physically in stores. Um, your larger losses is, is generally your uh, your internal shrink. Um, so we have uh, we have LP people in the uh, in the warehouses. We have them in um, uh, in order picking. Uh, we have them in receiving. Um, the uh, uh, LP is kind of the the police force of the uh, uh, of of a retail company, um, and uh, as such, kind of has the authority to go anywhere uh, within the company and confront anything within the company. Mm. Uh, and they also have you know, something closer to enforcement kind of training where they, uh, where they're, you know, able to, uh, um, uh, to, to be that, uh, that gut, that, that gut feeling that, that, uh, that conscious, uh, uh, that, that, uh, that uh, subconscious, uh, uh, state for you, uh, mm -hmm. where if your gut's not working properly, uh, there's probably is. So they can, uh, they can go anywhere and flag anything, uh, that, that may be lost uh, to the company. They are loss prevention in general. And in this case, it, it is loss to the company. Right. So given, let's give round numbers, but you know, not get too specific. Does, does this kind of fraud when people call in for these call centers, I don't know if it's, I don't know if you can answer as a, as a, an industry as a whole, or just from your own, ex, um, your own experience, but uh, are we looking at like tens of thousands or tens of millions of dollars lost in the retail sector from people doing this kind of, you know, fraud uh, over the phone or over call centers? What are we looking at here? I'm, I'm actually, you know, that's a really good question. And I'm not sure what those numbers are. Uh, I'm sure that, uh, that they are published out there. Um, I, I wonder if the, the loss is really borne by the retail companies, or in this case, if it's borne by uh, the the banking institutions, because you can't really show where the loss came from. Um, you have uh, someone who, you know, got the extracted the credit card information from the end user, uh, and now they're out trying to charge, uh, you know, stuff. It, is it really, I guess, any different than any other credit card fraud uh, that's happening? Um, so if you, uh, if you steal from us and then go use it to, you know, buy something at, uh, at Walmazon, um, is it, uh, uh, you know, is, is, uh, how, how are you accounting for where that came from? As far as Walmazon knows, it's just a bad credit card. Right. Right. So I'm 
I'm, I'm, I was listening to you and I completely car, not present fraud is, is one of those things that is, is a problem. You can still use a credit card on Amazon and you don't have, you know, the chip is, the chip is useless at Amazon, you know, or like you said, Walmart, if you're on any of these sites where you can just put in a credit card number, you've got the CVV because, you know, you've followed that Twitter where it's like somebody's posting a picture of their credit card information. Um, but yeah, with the, without the use of the chip and pen or the chip and SIG, you know, that that's uh, still very, very real. So um, I was, I was actually Googling like call center fraud and there's a website and we've got a link in the show notes for it uh, at called pin drop blog. You're saying uh, at least from 2015 to 2016 call center fraud increased 113%. Um, they're saying that, uh, you know, there's also been a 160% increase in overall call fraud from uh, like 2016 to 2017. And they're saying that they take advantage, like you said, of apps, VoIP, cheap mobile phones, fraud rings. Like you said, they probably could be working as a group. That 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 definitely makes sense. Uh, fraudsters are maturing, allowing them to be more subversive and clever when it comes to gathering sensitive info. Um, yeah, call centers are mostly overlooked, left behind as the most vulnerable channel. They spoof caller ID or IVR. IVR, that's what I was thinking of, IVR. Um, call center's responsibilities focused on the customer. They can fall prey to social engineering and fail to detect. Yeah. So, um, crazy, crazy. That's, um, yeah, well, I mean, it's and how uh, much of this goes undetected or unreported. So, you know, the 113% yeah. may not be, uh, may only be the companies that have, you know, chosen to report that. Uh, or have managed to detect it. Right. If you're, if you're a company that's getting, you know, literally a million plus calls a day. Uh, how much are you? Uh, how much are you actually able to detect that there was ever a fraud? If right. you don't have, uh, you know, if the fraud prevention doesn't catch it, or the fraud prevention reports it as probably having come from someone else, mm. you never know. Yep. So I, 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 I'm suspicious of, uh, of, you know, how, uh, of what magnitude even. Uh, that that they're able to uh, to pin down how much it costs. Yep. Yep. So they're saying financial institutions uh, lose an average of fifty seven cents to fraud for each incoming call, and one in every twenty nine hundred calls is fraudulent. How often? Um, I mean, you you said you've looked at you know calls in the last you know three to six months or whatever. How many, uh, how many times a day do you think you get people or, you know, on average, is it one a week? Is it this guy's just, okay, I'm going to try this one this week. I'm going to, you know, and does he have rotations? And so it's like on a cyclical thing. So you're like, okay, so that's, that's a question, In, uh, indicator of compromise. So you've had a call from Bob or whoever this guy is, who's called you. Um, and over time, maybe you could see this is a cyclical thing. So, uh, okay, it's, it's two months. We may be seeing another call from Bob or you know, another couple calls from Bob. Um, just in case he happens to find somebody who's you know new in the, in the pool at the call center, um, is there any kind of way to gather metrics to you know predict that when Bob might call? Bob always calls on three week intervals. <laughs> so it, it, you've gotten you've gotten that good. You've got him. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, almost yeah, to the day. Awesome. Um, it's uh, in fact uh, I, I send out an automatic email reminding people that uh, that we should be re uh, expecting a call from him. Oh my god, um, that's amazing! It's Bob Day. It's Bob Day. <laughs> yep. So okay, so with voice recognition and and the like, you can you can have these flags come up, right? Right. Well, this is uh, Charlie calling, but it doesn't sound like Charlie. It's not Charlie's mm -hmm. voice. That's a red flag. He doesn't know. His we order. hope to get there someday. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Well, um, I don't, I think I don't have any other questions. Mr. Betcher, how about you? I know I'm, I'm sorry. I've hogged the, the entire in interview, I think. No, I'm good. Okay. Well, um, one of the, one of the things that I'm, I'm happy about is that we have leadership like Anne, uh, Anne is not her real name, so don't go osenting her or whatever. But, um, cause I, I wanted to protect any anonymity that, that she may or may not have, uh, because, you know, I don't want, I don't want all the SE people out there thinking you can just, you know, hit up her, uh, her call center and do this. So, um, I'm, I'm very pleased that Anne is a moderator on our Slack channel 
and um and she's in our leadership channel and she you know gives great advice and uh i i appreciate her uh contributing to our community and hope that just because she's going to be a filthy sea level person now that uh, she can still come and hang out with us i i you know like i say it's a community and i get uh, i get at least as much as i give in fact i think i give more trolling and get more use back so uh I know, maybe i need to maybe <laughs> I, I didn't say trolling. That would be Scott. Scott says, you're, no, I'm just kidding. Scott loves you. Please. <laughs> um, so normally this is about the time of the podcast where we say, Hey, if people would like to reach out and talk to you, uh, how would they, you know, reach out and do that? But I don't know if that's something you want to do. So we can leave that up to you or we can just tell people to join the Slack and then they can contact you directly. Um, that, that might be a way to do it. Well, there's also my uh, consulting CSO uh, on Twitter as well. Oh, okay. All right. You're cool with giving out the, uh, the at consulting CSO. All right. At consulting CSO on Twitter. Um, oh, wait, not consult in. There's a G there. Um, yep. Okay. So on Twitter. And then uh, if people are interested in actually talking to her, uh, you know, in the break set community, you can always get on the Slack. Um, you can uh, send us an invite to uh, on G uh, on Twitter our official Twitter handle is at BreakSec, which is the official podcast Twitter. You can send us a DM there, or you can email bds.podcast at gmail.com. Uh, Mr. Betcher, how would people get a hold of you if they wanted to talk about like what we did with malware last week? You know, fileless malware is a thing. You don't believe so, but you know, if, if they have differing opinions, you can definitely reach out to them. And uh, how would how would they reach out to you? It seems to be a thing. I just I don't know what that thing is. Oh, so right. If someone could right. tell me. That would be great. Okay. They can reach me at my website, log md.com. Wait a minute. What's log at? What's log md.com? He says knowingly. <laughs> that is a product that I develop along with one Michael Goff. Okay. To help log all the things that uh, could be malicious. Okay. And this is for uh, Windows boxes, then, yeah? Yep. Okay, cool. And uh, your Twitter handle is? At Betcher Pwned. Okay, B-O-E-T-T-C-H-E-R-P-W-N-E-D. -E um, <clears throat> mine, uh, mine on Twitter is at Brian Brake. I'm not cool enough to figure out a cool hacker handle or anything, so it's just B-R-Y-A-N-B-R-A-K-E. And uh, so Ms. Berlin, who's out camping, uh, she's she's going to be sorely sorry she missed this because this was a great show. Um, she is at InfoSister on Twitter and also InfoSister on our Slack channel. Uh, you can uh, find her uh, working to help uh, the betterment of the InfoSec community with her mental health hackers, with her and another one of our moderators, uh, Megan Roddy. Uh, they're doing a lot of uh, villages I believe the next big one is DerbyCon. Um, they're going to be doing one there. Uh, she's also going to be at DEF CON, I believe, uh, doing Village there. So that's that's the other big one, I think. So, um, yeah, you can uh, go to Hackers Health. That's Hackers Multiple Health uh, on Twitter. Uh, and you can, uh, you know, reach out to her on either of those Twitter handles. Um, or you could just send an email to, like I said, bds.podcast, and I'll forward it on. So you can do that. Um, thank you to our patrons. Uh, you know, we can't do the show without you, your money, uh, your money and your tips and your, your, your help go to hosting, uh, the website. It also goes to the zoom that we're using right now to talk to Anne and, uh, you know, help out with the CTF club. Cause we use our zoom to great effect at least weekly, uh, multiple times for our book clubs, which we're doing, uh, uh, cult of the dead cow, I think currently still, uh, we're also, um, uh, have a SIM club that meets on a regular basis. We also have a CTF club and the CTF club is all about, um, learning different techniques on how to get through CTFs or, you know, for red team stuff, uh, you'll learn how to do a DLL injection, uh, process hollowing, that kind of stuff. PonySec is actually, uh, uh, doing a great job of making sure it meets semi-regularly. He has speakers who come in and, uh, you know, shows different techniques on how to do hacking. So if you're interested in doing that, like I said, uh, send us a DM or send us an email. Uh, we have a T-Pub shop. If you can't 
you know, give any money to help out with the, the pay, uh, you know, to be a patron, uh, you can buy a t-shirt, uh, or, you know, mug or stickers or whatever. And we get a little kickback from that. Um, but we appreciate all the help, uh, from that. So, uh, tell your friends about the podcast, send it, leave us a review on iTunes, uh, you know, Google play store, iHeartRadio, radio, we're pretty much anywhere, uh, in the world on the web. You can't, uh, uh you know, can't avoid us because we're, we're avoid us. you can't avoid us. We're like, uh, we're like a bad penny. We always show up. So, uh, Mr. Betcher, anything, anything from you, you're going to be a derby with me. We're actually going to be, ro- uh, roommates for the, the time we're there. So that's cool. Um, yeah, we're getting to, um, oh, my conference. Uh, I had the InfoSec camp out. If you're in the Seattle area, I keep forgetting about this one. I need to send out emails and stuff. Uh, it's next month. I mean, we're actually less than a month. Oh my God, we're less than a month away. Oh my Lord. Um, so it's the 23rd and 24th of August. So if you're in the Seattle area, you can go to infosetcampout.com. Uh, we still have tickets for the conference. We have some. T- we still have some spots available for camping if you're interested in doing so. Uh, wow. Yeah. That's less. Wow. That's like three, four weeks away. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. So me and Matt Domko better get started uh, planning that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I've actually been planning this since January. Cause if we hadn't, the campsites would have been completely gone by then. So I've had, I've had these campsite slots, uh, reserved since, uh, January and the, and the barn where we're going to be doing the, uh, the speakers, um, uh, since like February. So, uh, we have some speakers. It's not a typical red team, blue team thing. We've got some, a uh, couple of folks talking about disaster recovery. Uh, we got some folks talking about, uh, how to use, uh, ham radios. One of the ladies is a, as an instructor for the red cross and talking about emergency communications, uh, you know, ham radios, using ham radios in the area, uh, She's also talking about things like go kits and what to do if there's a natural disaster, which up here in Seattle, we've got uh, fires, we've got mega thrust earthquakes, we've got volcanoes. I mean, it's just a a cavalcade of awesome here dealing with fire and floods and stuff like that. So uh, she's going to talk about that. That's April Mardock. We've got uh, Brett Shaver, who's going to talk about uh, geolocation, digital digital, uh, forensics, uh, proving that somebody is where they say they are, you know, depending on geolocation and stuff. Um, let me see. We have Adam Baldwin, who's the uh, VP of security for Node.js. He's going to be talking about the uh, the Node.js uh, team and what they've been doing recently to uh, halt uh, bad packages and, and other developments that have been going on there. And we have a gentleman uh, by the name of Nico who is talking about uh, mobile device management uh, that he set up at his own house uh, using uh, open source technologies. So, um, you know, it, it's not a typical red team, blue team kind of talk. It's uh, they're just all over the place. And I, I, I think that's great. And we also have a privacy talk. So Miss Wendy uh, Knox Everett, uh, who everybody knows, Wendy, uh, Wendy CK on uh, Twitter. Uh, she's going to be doing a panel with another friend of hers, Um, I forget what her name is and I apologize for that, uh, about privacy, uh, talking about the, um, some of the stuff that she's done at sky talk, which has never been recorded. So, uh, it's going to be a lot of great content and a lot of great stuff. So, uh, please, uh, feel free to go to infosetcampout.com and check that out. I'm going to be taking a vacation after that uh, conference though, because it's uh, first time I've ever done anything like this and I still get weird sweats when I think about it. So. Uh, that's, that's too much information. Uh, anyway, so, um, yeah, come on out have a great time. That's it for this week. I'm breaking down security. I'm so happy that, uh, we had a chance to have Ann on and, uh, uh, yeah, come and check out our Slack and, and come and talk to her and tell her how you liked the show or didn't like the show. And, uh, if you're a social engineer, please feel free to reach out and tell us, uh, you know, we'd love to have some, maybe some follow on talks about the, uh, about, you know, when you call call centers or, you know, maybe, maybe you'd like to talk to Ann about doing some additional training from a social engineering point of view, what works, what doesn't, um, you know, that may also be some things that can open up some avenues for you for actual real work. So there you go. Uh, all right, that's it. I'm out. Uh, everyone have a great week. Be nice to one another. Take care of yourselves because you're the only you you have. And we'll talk to you again soon.